Hello guys, this is Emperor of the Great Unknown with another online Medieval 2 commentary battle. I am in command of Denmark and my opponent, the Crimson Kaiser of the Wu-Tang Clan, is in command of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, let's just get started off real quickly here. Um, so basically, uh, I think the rules were something around 15k standard rules. I'll have the rules and the army comps in the description again, just so we could get straight into it. Anyway, I deployed mainly on the flank because I saw that there was this huge hill in front of me, um, and that this was pretty much my best terrain option and to get an even fight. Uh, now he deployed his army quite wide, which actually makes it quite hard to flank him, especially since we're going to have the uh, red line here uh, blocking any real maneuvers. He's also moving most of his force this way. But over here I have some uh, mountain crossbowmen that are harassing his flank all the way over here. And basically it, his formation is so wide that I could really concentrate on one area um, while he has troops kind of scattered about. Uh, so I'm kind of going to use this against him, especially with these Teutonic Knights just chasing after my mounted crossbowmen. They've already lost like 20 or so men in the unit, so he's pretty much wasting his best cav here. Now, I did notice that he was going to bring the Holy Roman Empire, so I immediately fought on countering the Teutonic Knights. So I usually like to bring Denmark against the Holy Roman Empire, just because they have a better selection of infantry with the Chivalric Knights instead of Imperials. And you, you could also get these Norse War Clerics, which are really cheap, and they do pretty well in a melee against every cav. Now, I brought these Norse Archers, and I've put them in with my cav to help me win the cav fight. Um, I'll show you how I do this later, but I was planning for this to be a, like a flanking force, but obviously since we've moved our armies to the border, I gotta move, I gotta move it all the way over here. Um, but anyways, my skirmish force is, is much less quality compared to him because he brought the standard, probably I think four Pavis crossbowmen. Although he's got them in a really wide like lineup here because the scale was huge for this battle. But uh, this is actually less effective when you're skirmishing with an opponent that has a, a narrower army just because these guys won't be in range. Um, but he's going to move them up and then we're going to kind of start the skirmish. Now, he is going to move into a bit of a slight of a hill, so he probably won't get the best line of sight on my army, but actually, oh no, he has a pretty good line of sight, so he's good positioning here. Anyway, we have my mounted crossbowman coming in the background, and he's swinging his cav around. Um, so I see that uh, the cav fights is probably going to start over here, um, just because he has a chance to outflank me compared to the red line over here. And I got some Shivert Knights uh, in the back in case they try to charge my infantry. Basically with Denmark, the way I use this combo is I use the Norse War Clerics to engage the enemy cav, and then I use the Shivert Knights to flank around and charge. Um, Anyways, I'm trying to chase down these Pavis crossbowmen because I got a bit too close for my liking, but um, I just don't really catch him in time. Uh, luckily, though, he doesn't have any any other skirmishers in support, so these guys kind of get away um, without getting shot at too much. But anyway, the cav fight started over here. Um, now. This is where I'm going to use my Norse archers to uh, rain down fire arrows on the cav fight. Um, this is going to help lower their morale and help me win the cav fight, hopefully. Because I think fully upgraded Teutonic Knights have like a melee stats of uh, 14 and like 18, while my upgraded Norse war clerics have something like 11 and 20. So. So the, the Teutonic Knights are actually superior, but just because I'm using fire arrows, um, the Teutonic Knights are losing here. Although he does bring in Cav over here, and I'm quite slow with my Shiver Knights. Um, but these Norse Archers, again, are, are used pretty good as a distraction here, because it delays his Cav from getting in behind my own. Um, so I'm able to support with my own Shiver Knights and prevent a mass route of, of these Norse War Clerics. 
Although he will get a few charges off. It's a little too late for this unit right here. So I'm bringing in some infantry to the fight, and his main army is quite far away, so his cav is isolated again. Um, and really what he should have done was hang back and uh, enjoyed the skirmish, because he completely outclassed me. As you can see, uh, this unit got ripped up pretty badly. Anyway, I'm moving like half my army this way, and as you can see, the isolated Teutonic Knights route at like half strength. Um, he's bringing in some pikemen, but to be honest, these are too slow to be useful in, in this kind of mobile warfare. One, one of my cav units does break, though, so he does get some ground on this side of the battle. And I lose pretty much all my Norse war clerics. But they did their job of holding um, back the Teutonic Knights and killing most of them. My mounted crossbowmen are still firing in the background, but they don't really have any clear shots, so they're not, they won't be that effective. I have my Norse uh, archers firing down to help the cav fight again, and actually one of my units fights to death here. Yeah, they're completely surrounded here. He's going to get his general out, which was unfortunate. I was hoping to catch him in the melee and defeat him. So he brings over his infantry um, over here, and it's a little bit late, and actually, well, actually I did quite a number on his pike unit by charging, but... It must have been an accident, because I wouldn't want to charge pikes, but they must not have other pikes done. So anyway, my infantry is superior, because mine, mine have upgrades and they're shiver knights, well, against these feudal knights. So I'm going to win that battle easily. Although, the infantry have engaged over here, um, and this is where he brought down more numbers on my men. But he kind of clumped up his units over here, and... I have a forest that's charging around here. He must have not been paying attention here. And I'm actually going to charge my uh, crossbowmen to fill in this gap here. And it's actually going to route these uh, Imperial Knights quite quickly. Um, this just shows you how fragile Imperial Knights are. I mean, with stats of like, uh, I think it's 8 and, and 17 or something. I mean, they're worse than Dismounted Husk Girls, which is a pretty fragile unit in itself. Um, I don't know, I just think they're one of the most overrated units. At least in terms of heavy infantry. Anyway, so we've cleared up the calf fight over here. Um, we've got some infantry that are pretty much blocking our uh, chance to advance onto the main battle line. But uh, losing this Imperial Knight, uh, the enemy's pretty much kind of lost the momentum. And these guys are facing backwards for some reason. They must be in guard mode and... That's another problem. Is he had the he had the numerical advantage and he could really push hard. So I'm not sure why he put his men in guard mode. I guess he was counting on winning the fight over here. Um, also, my archers are in cr or my crossbowmen, I should say, are in close support. Um, while his pavis are scattered in the background, so they're not quite given that great of a, a morale support. That's another thing, when you use your skirmishers, even in the melee, if you just have them right behind your line, they'll just in, like kind of support your troops' morale, um, give you the slight edge. Even if they don't get very many kills uh, actually firing down at the enemy. It, they have a good position over here, though, and I think they're killing some of my men. Well, actually, some of them are, some of them are behind the hill here. But Anyway, so I... I Broke through over here, or he has one pikeman unit left. Um, his general's actually over here, it managed to survive the whole ordeal. So yeah, I'm just going to charge through down here, and I'm really in no rush to take out the, uh, these units. See, they route almost instantly. Um, so at this point, the battle is definitely swung into my favor, and um, he's got no cav left, pretty much. And I think his main problem was just actually charging down the hill and being impatient over here. I mean, when he had the skirmish advantage, and especially he had the red line to defend his flank, he, he could have played this a lot more defensive and made it a tougher job for me. Ooh, that guy. So, wow, a lot of my knights died. I must have had fragile hooves or something. Grace of God, our 
men have slain the enemy general. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. Yeah, so this battle's pretty much over at this point. Um, all's left is a bunch of heavies crossbowmen, and I think we got one pikeman unit over here that he forgot about. We also have these feudal knights. They were facing the wrong way again. Yeah, we're getting shot up by my mounted crossbows. So, it was a good game to my opponent. He brought the right army and he had the right idea. I just think um, when it came down to the actual battle, yeah, he made a few mistakes. And especially in managing his cav. He could have done better to maybe either go after my infantry or kept his cav back and used him in a defensive ma manner. The battle is very much in our favor. Oh no, sometimes players will start with a hill advantage and they'll kind of try to move off it to maybe give a, a more fair advantage, but when, when you're kind of outclassed in the infantry department and you know, sort of even in the cav department, and especially when you have an advantage with your crossbowmen, you should try to keep the hill, or at least try to get a maneuver advantage before you try to enemy force um, wrestle with the enemy. So these pikemen actually hold out for quite a long time um, for being surrounded and being the last unit left. Um, but they have their they don't have their pikes out, so... Um, it's really frustrating in Medieval 2 that the 3rd and 4th ranks don't ever put their pikes down. Or don't ever use them. Um, like they did in Rome 1. I think that's uh, one of the major issues with pikemen. I mean, there are other issues, but... If they had a 3rd and 4th row of pikes down to block the enemy moving through, then... Uh, they'd have a much easier time. I mean, you could simulate uh, four ranks of pikes uh, by having two pikemen units like right on top of each other. I know Paladin Bob does this a lot as a player, um, and it basically all simulates the four rank phalanx. The anyway, the battle's over. Um, so, again, good game to my opponent. Uh, I'm sure he was a good player. He just made a couple mistakes here and there. Um, and he didn't do too badly over here. He he did support his isolated cav, and he did end up beating my Norse war clerics. But I was just closer, uh, and ended up winning the battle with more men. Anyway, uh, let's look at the statistics here. Uh, these Norse war clerics, as you can see, they didn't really get the kills. Um, but again, they're against the Teutonic knights, so they're the underdogs. Um, of course, the Shivrick Knights were the ones left over to clean up the mess, so that's why they got the kills. Um, the Norse archers didn't do so well, uh, but again, that was mainly due to them just being a support role, really destroying the morale. I think one of them got caught out um, and was charged. And again, the crossbowmen didn't do so well either, but the infantry held pretty well. Um, so Denmark definitely has, has a good line up with Shivrick Knights and Feudal Knights. If I wouldn't really go with any other of their infantry except maybe Norse Swordsmen. But you just gotta remember Norse Swordsmen have really poor morale. Uh, their only advantage is just being cheap. Um, anyway, so good game to my opponent. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a good day.